everyone. So today we're going to do a particle photon application and we're going to monitor the RSSI of the Wi-Fi chip on the photon module. Um, for those of you who don't know what RSSI is, it's essentially a measurement of signal strength. So basically how well your photon is connected to your Wi-Fi router. Um, so what we're going to use today are a couple of parts. We've got a uh, three character uh, segment LED driver um, which we can print three characters to. Um, we're just going to be printing our RSSI uh, connection strength to that and then we're going to use a uh, I2C interface module for particle photon. Um, the particle photon plugs into it and it basically just provides an, uh, an I2C connection that we can connect our sensor to. And lastly, we're going to use a particle photon module. Um, and I am attaching an external antenna to it. There are two connections or two antenna options on the photon module. One is the internal antenna and one is the external antenna, which is made with a U.FL connection. And we're basically going to use that for experimentation purposes to see how it affects our RSSI. So we're going to flash some firmware into the particle photon module, which is very easy because we've already uh, developed and released a library for this article. So it's really quick. You're just going to flash it in there and you're ready to go. Um, of course, uh, these products are available on controleverything.com. We, here we have the three character uh, LED segment driver. And here we have the I2C interface module that the particle photon plugs into. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to make sure that our particle photon module is associated with our account and is connected to our Wi-Fi network. Once it has internet connectivity, you'll see a breathing cyan LED on the module. And at that point, you know that you're ready to go. So, once that's ready, let's head over to build.particle.io forward slash build, sign in with your particle credentials, and uh, we'll be able to flash some code here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the devices icon here and make sure the particular photon module you're working with is, first of all, online and is selected. If you have more than one device, you have to make sure that you have a star next to it so that uh, it indicates that it's selected. The next thing we need to do is we need to go into the library section on particles uh, build IDE and we'll go down here to community libraries and we're going to search for segment driver. Um, that's going to be the uh, library for this article. Um, you'll search it here and then it'll come up after you search and then you'll just click on it to select it. I'm the contributor of this library so for me it shows up here under my libraries. Um, for you, you'll have to search it and it'll pop up down here and you can select it. Once you do find it, go ahead and click to select it. And then you'll see three files here, the rssiexample.ino, the segmentdriver.cpp, and the segmentdriver.h. And from here, it's very simple. You just make sure that this rssi underscore example.ino is selected and then click use this example. That will fork the example and bring it into your uh, code library or your, uh, your code files and it'll create an app. And at this point we are ready to flash the uh, device. The uh, flash button here should be uh, selectable. If it's not, make sure that you have your device selected and it is online. So let's go ahead and flash the firmware. So after you flash, you'll see the flashing magenta LED, and then we'll see the green light start flashing again, and then we'll be back to the breathing blue cyan. At that point, you know that your module is running the RSSI application in it, and you should start to see some RSSI readings on your character display. So from here, now we're going to go over to mobical.io. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. And uh, we'll go ahead and shrink this down, make it a little bit easier to work with here. It's made to be run on a mobile device anyway, so it looks better like this. 
So uh, once you get to mobicle.io, you'll be prompted to sign in with your particle credentials. After you sign in with your particle credentials, you'll see a list of your devices. So this is the device that we flash the firmware into, so we'll want to click on that. And here we'll see we have a variable that displays our, the current RSSI of our module. And we have a couple of functions available, write int and select antenna. Write integer is essentially going to allow you to write a number to the character display. It really doesn't work very well for this since our firmware is running in a loop putting the RSSI value in there. So that's not really useful for this particular application. But if we select on, uh, click on select antenna, we can actually switch between the external antenna and the internal antenna. If you select a different antenna, the module will power down, switch to that antenna, and then power back up again. So right now we're on the external antenna, so let's switch to the internal antenna. And all we need to do to do that is just type in internal as an argument and click send, and you'll see your module reboot. And once it boots back up and is connected to the cloud, we'll see the RSSI value here update. And you'll see now we're getting a reading of, uh, you know, 60, 62, 63. The lower this number is, the better your connection strength is. Um, so, you know, uh, we got down to 59 there. So let's switch to the external antenna and see what that does for us. We'll just type in external as argument and click send. And we'll power cycle again here. And now you'll see, uh, well, our reading actually got a little bit higher there for a minute. You know, we're up around 72, uh, 59. It really jumps around a lot, it seems like, with this external antenna. Um, at that point, you know, you could experiment with mounting the antennas in different ways, see if we have it like that. We're definitely getting a better RSSI value. Uh, we're getting down all the way down to 49 there, but look, if I leave it flat on the table like that, um, we don't get a whole lot of gain from the external antenna. And then, of course, if we're set to external antenna and we disconnect the antenna, you'll see that the gain or the uh, RSSI value actually goes really bad. You know, we get up to around 80 or so. So we can definitely tell that we're getting proper RSSI readings, and this is a really nice uh, application. Um, you can run in your module whenever you're initially mounting it somewhere, um, whenever you're experimenting with antenna mounting locations and things of that uh, nature. So I hope you all found this interesting. Of course, you can check out the GitHub repository for this application on our GitHub repository page. Um, it has a very good description about the library and how you can use it uh, for applications other than RSSI. Um, and of course, uh, we'll have links to the product pages for everything used in this article that you guys can check out. And if you have any questions, just let us know. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy and have fun.